Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of What's New in MXU. Uh, today, MXU 5.7 and OmniPC 5.7. My name is Stefan Couture, Global Product Support Specialist with Olympus NDT, and I'm joined today by Tommy Bourjola, Product Director of the Phase Array Portable Products. Hello, Tommy. Hello, Stefan. Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening to this video. So, there's a lot in MXU as every uh, revision, but uh, we will show only the top three functionalities in this video. For more information, you can uh, read the release notes or ask your Olympus representative uh, again for more details on other functionalities. So up to you, Stefan. Yes, uh, so the first feature that is a well awaited one, um, and that is the support of uh, legacy MX2 files, whether we're talking about setup file or data file. Uh, so first up, setup file, as you see, I have a uh, an Omniscan X3 connected right now. It's the default setup, nothing fancy. So with 5.7, if you go into your uh, file open menu, you'll see in the drop down from setup, there is a new option for OPS and OUS, that is the uh, legacy setup file. So if I select this one, my MX2 setup, the Omniscan X3 will load the MX2 setup file, the adjustments that were made to the, the focal loss, the beams, meaning uh, beam delays, beam gains. However, uh, calibration indicators, VW, will not be uh, carried over. However, uh, as you can see, my gain is still uniform across all of my uh, focal laws. The reason being that those are two separate electronics. So as you can see, although I was calibrated at 80%, now my gain is quite a bit hotter. I can quickly solve this issue though, if I go into display and select tracking the highest amplitude, Right here, I'm on my highest beam. I can select gain, auto 80%. And now if I move across, you see that every focal law hit the 80% at the 15 millimeter depth uh, side drill hole. So my calibration is still valid. I can quickly uh, redo a quick check and keep uh, keep working or moving forward. What is true for MXU is also true for Omni PC. If you want to ever uh, recall old data files and uh, revisit them, monitor the, 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 the condition of, a, of an asset over time, it's possible. So now we have Omni PC 4 with two phase array group, one tough group, and of course, a, of course, a big nasty one here. So as I move along, you have all your groups, your settings, that's fine. Uh, you can open the same data file now with OmniPC 5.7. Benefit from the new additions, uh, in this example, software gain, which was not available with the MX2. You can lower the gain, increase the gain, uh, move from one group to the next. And compared to the old one, there's no longer a need for a security dongle or has key. It's free of charge. It's only a download away from uh, benefiting from this. Um, if you want more advanced features or more capabilities, WildSight also supports legacy MX2 file now. now. So same data file again, as I move along, you see the snap feature tracking the maximum amplitude. I can build custom layout simply by uh, dropping new layouts in there. Um, if I go into analysis and merge, I can take those two groups, SKU 70, uh, 270, SKU 90, merge all of the A scans and benefit from the, uh, the the advanced analysis feature from WildSight, basically. Here, there, 
and I can move my zone around, isolating one indication or, or more. So just a few of the key features, uh, key advanced feature from uh, from WildSight, um, but it will work just like uh, just like as per usual with with those uh, legacy files. So Tommy, do you have uh, something new? I do have something new. That was feature number one. Thanks for explaining it so great, Stefan. So time for feature number two of the top three TFM filters. If you are doing high temperature hydrogen attack or HDHA, you will probably be interested with TFM uh, in TFM filters. So let me share the OmniScan screen here. I have a live OmniScan S3. And a HTHA sample. The probe is 10 megahertz, if you want to know, 64 elements, 832. And as I'm streaming for, you know, colonies of HTHA here, I see some indications popping here and there. And, you know, it's, the, the signal looks great. However, there's that background noise. There is that ripple or ringing effect at the top. After a while, we get used to it, but what if it was gone? So we added filters for that reason. Two types of filter exist now in TFM, bandpass. Bandpass might have some use for specific applications, but the most interesting one for HDHA, as an example, will be the high pass filters. Which frequency? Really depends on you. They're all there, you can try them. Uh, my preference for a 10 meg probably goes with something around six megahertz high pass filter just because I'm filtering just enough low frequency content and it's I'm making sure not to cut off the great signals found in uh, closer to the probe frequency. So look at the difference as I activate the high pass, all of that uh, ringing effect goes away. So again, try each filter, see which one fits best for your application. Uh, on their TFM settings receiver. So that was feature number two. Feature number three is another uh, functionality that is uh, that has been requested since quite a while, uh, namely Tuft lateral wave processing. So I will load a Tuft data file to demonstrate that on board the uh, OmniStan H3. Uh, with the lateral wave uh, processing comes two functionality. One is the synchronization, linearization, straightening. It's all synonyms of the same thing. We call it synchronization in the X3. The other one is called the removal. So once it's synchronized and it, you need to synchronize first before you have the removal, once it's synchronized, you can remove the lateral wave. All right, so this is my tough data. In this example, this is a 15 megahertz that the X3 handles very well, by the way. Six, uh, 15 megahertz, 70 degree. And I will demonstrate how to use the lateral wave processing. First of all, call the cursors, okay? Reference and measurement cursor. And that will, uh, uh, that will uh, bracket the section where you want to apply the literal, uh, lateral wave processing. Something new and very important, make sure to activate your gate A. And why is that? We actually changed the workflow a little bit with the S3. We now use the position of the gate A and the length of the gate A. Actually, you can see it on the B scan as well to bracket the lateral wave. The reason why we did that, actually there are two reasons. One is to align better with weld site software. Uh, hopefully you can see my weld site screen here and weld site uses a uh, thanks Stefan. weld site uses a gate so if you activate your synchronization you know it's as easy as really two clicks so number one reason number two reason when you use an uh, nx3 it's the screen is great it's large but it's not as as 
large as a world site analysis stream. So uh, cursors tend to be a little bit more uh, in the way of each other. So we figure to separate the later, uh, you know, the lateral wave positioning by using the gate would be easier on selecting cursors than trying to, you know, put fingers next to each millimeter and <laughs> I can relate. And it would just be easier. Yeah, exactly. The bigger your fingers, the tougher it is. So remember gate A? Just bracket that lateral wave with the start, the width. Okay. And you can go in calibration tools. We have tough calibration. Under type is a new hidden function. Well, not really hidden, but there's a fourth menu called lateral wave, lateral wave processing. Synchronize, reset, remove and reset the removal. So I will pin, there's a pin icon here, so that goes on the side. And what I have to do now is select a good portion, okay, that, that is called my reference A scan. If I want to, since I have the gate, I can auto 60. Well, that was almost 60, so not much change for this one. And synchronize. So it will synchronize what is uh, included between the cursors. I can reset, I can resynchronize, and you can adapt really. And synchronize different sections altogether, really depending on, on your signal. At any time, you can reset, you can adjust this, and that gives you a lot of flexibility for all types of uh situation mm -hmm. now that was synchronization i can remove or reset uh, this whole thing one last thing about the gate a the threshold as you can see the threshold is probably a little bit higher than 20 percent on this example it's not being used by the omni stand it displays the gate as usual but the algorithm for the lateral wave processing uses automatic threshold based on the signals it's looking at and cross correlation. So don't spend time adjusting your threshold with gate A. It doesn't do anything. Uh, it calculates its own thing. So if you want to change the results, you can ad adjust your cursors, pick the right reference A stand, and you should be on your way. And this Toft processing also is available on the MX2 data files, on the DSX data files as well. Uh, if the gate A is not activated by default, you can go in the gate menu, turn it on, and you'll have access to the same tools, uh, just like Tommy demonstrated. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Very interesting. So that is the main highlight of the MXU and OmniPC 5.7 software. Uh, for the complete list of features, as you mentioned in the beginning, uh, you can visit the release notes or contact either of us, your local cell representative, or visit www.olympus-ims.com for a software download and uh, additional information. Again, thank you for your time, Tommy. And uh, thank you. See you next time.